Good luck winning an argument with voices in your head. I had to listen, yes, but they seemed to know a thing or two. And unlike therapists, they weren't getting paid. What did I know? Nothing. Dirt, trees, corn, air, solitude, which is fine by me. I didn't want to leave the Green Mountains. I love the smell of pine, the taste of maple sugar, the sound of the test of the annual pile of stacked wood for water against my stepfather's hammer and pick, the feel of heat from a young fire in the hearth, the sight of flames licking up the stone and into the flue, the sound of the cold, dry air trapped in the chimney running for the sky. The crickets and tree frogs, fireflies, dragonflies. I love sprinting out across the fields, down into the pine groves there, my feet softened by the needles, and swaying gently in the cradle of a pine tree, a hundred feet in the air. The year was 2003. I was 10 years old and the fastest of my friends. The boys just scratched their little heads. They chalked it up to my long legs, but some things you can't outrun. My father died the day I was born. My mother gave me up. I know not why. I was adopted and raised as an only child by a kind and loving couple in the woods. They would have to homeschool me because by elementary school, I was already playing hooky. The schools didn't know what to do with me in my empty seat. They tried but could not deter me from wandering away and roaming the countryside, which I did at all hours of day and night. They called the police sometimes when I went missing. The police were very nice at first, but after repeated offenses, they tried scaring me straight. They put handcuffs on me, locked me in the back of the car, but I just lay down on my side and fell asleep. The other girls kept asking why I ran away. Some of the boys were inspired to run away too. The guidance counselors were concerned. One of them almost lost his job for tying my shoelaces together. I never understood how there were so many rules to follow or why I should follow them. They couldn't have stopped me had they duct taped me to my desk. Meanwhile, the voices were calling me, choosing me. There'd be no person, place, or thing could deny them. No medication could stop them. They never made me do anything or bullied me. They were kind and sweet. I began to believe in them. The feeling began to take. Was I brainwashed? I don't know, but I no longer felt so alone. They were with me. And this world, they whispered, a larger and kindred collective spirit I could neither see nor possibly explain to anyone. All I cared about was maintaining my cred as the fastest one around. My stepdad encouraged me, yelling out across the fields, run like hell, my little lightning bug. I would go from one knee bent forward and the back one locked against the earth to gone kicking up dust, ready for any challenge and unable to sit still. Some of the girls hated me with a passion, but most of the kids revered me. My reputation preceded me. I had been the fastest for so long, they stopped trying to catch me. I hollered out, but they pretended I was invisible. They played the game without me so someone else could be the fastest kid around. I realized too late, being a show off is no good. I started to change my strategy. They thought they'd ignore me. Good luck. I hid in the woods, then jetted out of nowhere. It came up on them like a ghost. The element of surprise, the thrill of catching someone completely off guard. I watched the color drain out of their faces, stricken with fear.